Brad, to his credit, what does he do? He goes, uh, you you lose the one dog in Marcus, but then you go back and get a get a dog just as effective in Drew Holiday, and he's yeah. he's he's fit to build. So I, I don't know this team barring injuries. I see this team as the team to beat. The Cedric Maxwell Podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. All right, it's another episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. I am Josue Pavone. Cedric Maxwell's here coming at us from out west, out in San Francisco. The Southern's getting ready to take on uh, the Warriors and the rest of California, right? You got the four cities, uh, the, the, the California trip that the Celtics are, are leaving TD Garden still undefeated. Uh, incredible five-game homestand where they swept and uh, 14-0 and at TD Garden, man. Impressive stuff. Also, we're going to talk about Draymond Green, the latest from him and his uh, infinite suspension uh, or indefinite suspension, I should say, rather. And you know, it was interesting, Max. We were giving uh, we were, you and Stephen, they were kind of giving him, giving him the benefit of the doubt in terms of these types of situations. And then like 24 to 48 hours later, uh, all hell broke loose. And, you know, everyone knows what happened, but we'll get into the, the latest out of that. But first things first, let's talk about the Celtics, man. What's got into this team? I mean, this is this is incredible. Ever since the loss of the Indiana Pacers, they didn't make it to the in-season tournament finals. They didn't make it to Vegas. And it's like they've turned this switch. And, I, and I've and i seen it in a big way, especially in guys like uh, uh, Jalen Brown, you know, Jason Tatum, the leaders, obviously, but also guys like Derek White. And, and Drew Holiday, but from your perspective, Max, what are you what are you seeing uh, in their approach? What's different about the Celtics right now? Um, basically, what I'm seeing right now is a team right now that's hitting pretty much on all cylinders. I think if you look at them offensively and defensively, they're playing well. And maybe that uh, not going to Vegas was a good thing for them because you're able to actually come back home, get three days rest, and then kind of jumpstart yourself. And, and they've done that. Uh, it was a big test for them, you know, teams that they beat. You know, you came back, you beat New York, who gives you a tough time. And then you had two games with Cleveland, where Donovan Mitchell has always kind of gone wild, and, and you're able to beat them twice. Orlando has, had, twice. Orlando has had your number, and you get them back-to-back, and you're able to beat them handily. And you had a lot of different people who uh, were able to win the game. Uh, first night you have Orlando, you're playing without Porzingis and Al Horford. Then the next night you got Al Horford and Porzingis coming back. So um, it was, it was, it was, it was very impressive to see how they played, to see how they defended. Uh, they were, they, they were just hitting on all cylinders. Joe Mazzula has punched a lot of buttons, and you know people for a long time have been saying Pritchard. And um, Hauser, you know, they can't be your seven and eight guy. They, they can't be. Right. But, you know, they filled into a nice little role. Percet's come in and plays some nice minutes. Um, so I, I'm not sure. We'll get a chance to see. And I, that's why I said this week, last week was a big week. And this week will be just as impressive to me. I think that if you're looking at this team, if they can come out here and go three and one, I think that would be a good thing going back to Boston. Yeah, I want to see if they keep this momentum going. And I love how Joe Mazzula talked about the three main guys off the bench, the Al Horford, Sam Hauser, Peyton Pritchard, guys who have been playing at a high level as well, you know, really carrying that second unit. But he also talked about guys who are going to have to be ready when their name to call. And then this, the, the second unit went out and demonstrated that. Lamar Stevens getting getting uh, big-time minutes, mm-hmm. uh, something he's not used to. You know, that was a big spot for him. And he goes out there, scores double figures, comes out with some big stops, you know, against teams that are, aren't, aren't easy to beat, especially a team like the Orlando Magic, like you said. So this haven't been since last season. You know, they had this winning streak that carried over from last year into this year, you know, what happened in Orlando – and then now the Celtics go out there and beat them twice on their court, man. I mean, it's, it's impressive stuff. And like you said, that second game, it wasn't even close, man. Like, that's an, that's an impressive win, if, if you ask me, especially when you're able to keep this streak going in, in, in a, a game where, uh, you know, you didn't have Porzingis and you had to turn to guys that aren't necessarily used to having their names called. Or just, impress, just as impressive has been the way Jalen Brown has played in the last 10 days or so. He has been... He's been sensational. 
Ever mean, since Tatum, that, uh, those Tatum, two games, Tatum, he didn't have an assist. Ever since then, yeah, I feel Tatum, like. Tatum has been Tatum has been okay, or Tatum, it, uh, or anybody else. He's he's great, but he it right. wasn't. He hasn't been Jason Tatum. Has been spectacular. He's been good, but Jalen Brown has been spectacular here, rebounding as you said, passing the ball, making steals. He said he wanted to be an all-around player, and uh, he's done just that. He stepped into a whole another role. Al Horford still running the floor. Porzingis, Drew Holiday, you're starting to see more offense for him. He's starting yeah. to feel a lot more comfortable. And the guy who's uh, Sean Grandy, my broadcast partner, said who's probably going to be left off the off the All Star team is Derek White. Derek White is playing as well as anybody. He's but that's the thing about the Celtic team. How many ways can they beat you, and how many players do they have to beat you now? That's what is really crazy about watching them. It's like everyone's fits the system, right? If guys aren't, you know, guys aren't available, the other guys going to pick up the slack, and you're mm-hmm. seeing it in a big way on the defensive end of the floor. And I think that's the part that makes this team, you know, that makes this thing feel like it's real. You know, the way they're playing defense, the way they're stopping teams, the way they're stopping opposing teams' best players. And even if that one particular guy, like a Donovan Mitchell, goes off, they're able to get the other guys out of it. And as soon as they're making those defensive stops, it's triggering offensive possessions, you know, at a high rate, getting to the free throw line. You know, it's incredible stuff. Like you said, man, they're hitting on all cylinders. And I know people just throw that out there, but like, no, literally, that's the case with this Celtics team. Yeah, right how now. do you, here's the thing about Celtics, how, you, how do you defend them then? I mean, this is the this is, I mean, the dream scenario for Porzingis is probably this one. Whereas before he's been your number one option or your number two option, but here in Boston he might be your third, he might be your fourth option. Right. So yeah. he's able to fit in a lot more easy with what he's able to do. Brown and Tatum are going up and down. They're playing great basketball. Drew Holiday is fitting into a role that everybody wanted him to fit into. Of being that facilitator, that passer, and even the scorer now. And Neil White at the bench. Uh, Joe Mazzulla has called a lot of uh, uh, good things. And boy, Brad Stevens looking like like new money when you talk about, you know, some of the things he's done with this team, some of the players he's gotten. You know, to go out and get Porzingis. Uh, and Porzingis has said that all the time. I, I cornered him on the bus and he I said, man, you can't stop smiling. He said, I am so happy that Brad pulled the trigger on the trade. And, you know, we all talked about, well, Rob Williams, Rob Williams, we can't, you know, how are they going to do? No mark is smart. How are they going to do with that? But Brad, to his credit, what does he do? He goes, uh, you you lose the one dog in Marcus, but then you go back and get a, get a dog just as effective in Drew Holiday. And he's, yeah. he's, he's fit the bill. So I, I don't know. This team, barring injuries, I see this team as a team to beat. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money bet. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com Boston and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. For sure. I mean, it's impacting the game in different ways. And guys like Porzingis, Drew Holiday, you know, they just they fit. You know, it's just a, it's been a perfect fit for the Celtics team. And, and, and guys that have been in the league long enough, like your Derek Whites and, you know, obviously Tatum and Brown, they, they, they know what they need to do. You know, everyone's at their spot where they know what they need to do. And you know what, Max? Maybe you're right. Maybe not going to Vegas was a blessing for these guys. You know, the extra time together, you know, the the, the extra chat, you know, chit chat. You know, you, the, the ESPN graphic about the Jalen Brown, we talked about this, right? Uh, Jalen Brown went two games with no assists, but he had 42 uh, field goals uh, attempted. You know, mm-hmm. I love seeing Joe Mazzulla not only stand up for Jalen Brown saying that he, you know, he's going to find other ways to impact the game. And it's about the secondary passes that don't really show up on the box score, but then Jalen Brown goes out there and does it and filling up the box score, especially in that assist category. Well, I, I think Jalen Brown has gotten to this, which I love is a little bit nastier. We've seen him a little bit more confrontational with other players. Uh, I think in Orlando, some something happened and he, 
galloped in a player's face. And I'm like, heart be still, because that's all I've asked of those two guys. That when they are more engaged than the guys below them, those that Sean Grandy would say, my broadcast partner, the ancillary guys are going to take that energy mm. that they have and they're going to use it. So, uh, and when they're, when they're a little bit nastier, I think that's good for this team. That was, um, what's his name? Bots, Botsy. He used to play for the Pacers. Those two, they kind of have a history. They had, they had like, they had turned back and forth before in the past. So Jalen was ready this time. And, and of course, I, I think these guys remember what happened in Orlando last time. And they're like, you know what? We're not gonna, just going to beat these guys once. We're going to beat them both, both games, yeah. you know, both games yeah. at home. And, well, and, and with that, you know, they got the best year, record in the NBA. Well, look at last year, Orlando was 9-20. and 20, And they came to your building and they beat you two times mm-hmm. in your building last year. The Celtics were determined not to let that happen. And that was a real good, those were some good games. That, 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 this five-game stretch of New York, Cleveland, Cleveland, Orlando, Orlando, and that's a, mm-hmm. that's a tough stretch. And I always say the game preceding you going out on the road is like a road game because you're, 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 you're antsy, you're thinking about, you know, what you're going to be doing next. Well, the Celtics have done that now. You got a road trip, which is, which, which is going to be interesting. The fact that you have already opened up and saying, you know, you got, uh, you come out here and you, you're, you're, you're the guy who's Draymond Green, who everybody's talking about. Uh, everybody's saying the Golden State Warriors are dead right now, and they can't compete. They can't win another championship. Do they have another run in them? And if anybody brings it out of them, it probably would be the Boston Celtics. Mm-hmm. So these two games, and then you got a back-to-back against the team that runs people out of the building, uh, uh, Sacramento, and then both the you know the Clippers are playing well now, and then the Lakers. So this is this going to be these next couple of days are going to be good considering what they're doing, how they do it, and how they have to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no question. I mean, that that's going to be what everyone's going to be looking for. You know, see the, the way they go about these games, their approach. Can they carry that over to what we've seen uh, throughout that five game homestand in Boston? And it'll be interesting to see because, you know, second night of the back to backs, Al Horford can't play. Obviously, that's always been instilled. But then you wonder how Porzingis' body going to respond to this. You know, they say it's mm-hmm. a precautionary thing with the calf, the left calf. Uh, that's the same one that he's had a, a, a history with before. So, you know, it's just precautionary for the Celtics to not have him, you know, they had him sit out. But then seeing him back in the lineup against the Magic, I think it was encouraging. So we'll yeah. see if that carries over to to um, to, to this matchup against the Warriors. Uh, in San Francisco, where Max is uh, chilling in his hotel room, ready to eat some dinner, squeeze it in his pockets episode before we, uh, <laughs> before he unwinds and gets ready for game plan and everything for, for, for the, uh, for the Warriors game, right? I'm sure you got the, you got the game tape out, the film, you're ready. You study the Warriors right now, right? Absolutely. And see what they're like without Draymond Green. Yeah. How definitely. they're going to play. Is Looney going to be the guy? Uh, Kaminga, is he going to be the guy? People have been talking about uh, Wiggins, and Wiggins hadn't played well. They still have some great pieces that you know that that you think about this team. I don't look at them as a championship team now, but they still have some pieces that can hurt you from night to night. Uh, what was it the other day that Steph Curry's three point streak was broken against uh, Portland? Is mm-hmm. that a good thing? Because you know he's coming back for this game. <laughs> Staying there. Start you over. Know, yeah, yeah. You you stop me on this game. Guess what? Boston, I got something for you coming to see you. You know, you guys coming to my home. I need to light you up. So uh, and it's, it, this is some uh, high level stuff. Absolutely. And like you said, Max, no Draymond Green. Uh, the suspension continues. Uh, could go up to three weeks, according to a new report from The Athletic. Uh, that's also stating that he's uh, he's supposed to begin counseling. Uh, but with that, they're saying at least three weeks, the suspension continues. Well, what, what kind of counseling? Are we and talking? that's the latest update that comes out from The Athletic. That's all. They're, that's all they're saying, Max. Just just counseling. Yeah, uh, well, we did start, start counseling. So, so all the incidents before there was no counseling. I mean, there, uh, there's, the, a, there's a there's a TikTok tape of Draymond incident after incident after incident after incident. I fact, think this told, one takes the cake, he, though, Max. He, he I, said I, that. It's the worst one? Well, he, he said, eh, let me see. The punch, the punch on Nurkic, 
the 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 timing of it i think is also significant it was like the middle of the third quarter you know what i mean like it wasn't like one of those crucial plays where your your, your heart was too into it he just he just snapped for, for for one reason i don't know you know well he told stephen a smith uh, they they were doing something and he told stephen a smith and wilborn that uh, michael wilborn he said um i can't lead this team the way i want to because of the punch and what happened. He said, people are looking at me completely different. Stephen A. Smith, he was saying that, you know, he said, and he quoted, he said, Draymond Green might play in his last uh, game as a warrior. So, you wow. know, he, he, he knows the ins and outs. He knows the people in high places. You know, he talked to, you know, Stephen A. Smith talked to you and I, so he apparently he must know the people in the high places. He was able right. to get on our podcast. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a legitimate source we pulled, right, Max? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You believe yeah. it? What do you think? You think this that that would be? You think that's a legitimate? Like that? There's a chance of that? I do. I think if you're the Warriors right now, you're trying to maximize staff. So you don't. If Draymond's not doing, and Clay is struggling. And Wiggins, do you do you want to make a move? And mm -hmm. I've heard for a while people said, well, maybe you go to um, maybe you go to Toronto. Uh, Toronto's always wheeled the deal. Then uh, you know Seattle, and mm -hmm. maybe somebody else comes along coming to uh, Golden State to give them more energy. So we'll we'll, we'll find out very very soon here uh, what's going to happen. So. The interest level for me tomorrow is very, very high. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for candidates isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 300 million global monthly visitors according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work, use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to any other job sites according to a recent Indeed survey. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy because it knows exactly what I'm looking for. It gives me the top candidates that I need that enables me to comb through the other applicants and get right to the top to what I'm looking for. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of the Cedric Maxwell podcast can get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibly at Indeed.com slash Maxwell. Just go to Indeed.com slash Maxwell right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash Maxwell. Terms and conditions apply. In the minute I've been talking to you, 23 hires were made on Indeed, according to Indeed data worldwide. Get unparalleled access to job seekers with over 350 million monthly unique visitors globally, according to Indeed data, and an extended reach through Glassdoor. That's indeed.com slash Maxwell. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. See, the thing with Draymond, man, it, it's like the, the older he gets, the more he gets comfortable in doing those type of plays. And I just feel like it's just reached a point where he's gone so far beyond the line <laughs> that the NBA is just like, we're just, we're just going to have you sit and we'll let time decide you know, your fate. As time goes on, we'll come up with new ideas. I think this counseling thing is just kind of like the, the beginning of the process to see if what transpires out of that, it, which one, uh, one of the, 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 the thing about the suspension too, is that he can still go to the facilities. He can still hang out with his team. So I think that's a huge, uh, that's a huge, what do you call it? Uh, can he, that's a, can he sit on, can he sit on the bench of the game? No, he can't do that, Max. But I mean, that's a huge advantage if you're him because at least you can yeah, yeah. you can tap in with the team and then go back and work on your work on yourself, if you will, right? Well, so that's, they, a, well, that's a huge advantage well, for the NBA. The NBA didn't have to do that. Like that, well, that's I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Well, did that happen with John Moran? Was he taken away from the team for what he did? Yeah, and not not to be around them. So mm -hmm, that's uh, 
it's going to be a uh, be interesting road for you. Uh, a very interesting road. And really, the funny thing about it, you're looking at a guy who is, once he gets through playing, he's going right into the Hall of Fame. He is a Hall of Fame player. Uh, and the fact that he has won uh, multiple championships, he was Defensive Player of the Year, uh, you know, four-time champion, uh, all-star. So, you know, Draymond Green has solidified himself uh, as an all-star, as a, uh, you know, a Hall of Famer. But at the same time, he solidified himself now as maybe damaged goods. You know, I'm, mm. what I'm going to do for you, uh, you know, when I get to the game tomorrow, I'm, I'm me and I'm going to have some lunch, me and E40. We're going to go, you know, hang out. <laughs> you know, your guy, E40. Yo, yo, no yeah. one knew you would pull that off. No one knew he would pull up. He would he would spot you. And all of a sudden, I'll, I'll get some kind of wacky video from you two uh, from the court side talking about, yo, yo, <laughs> trying to trying to recreate what happened back in 2020. E40. Joe Swade's it. If you guys so don't know, like a new ping pong. Y'all be doing ping pong on video. That's East Way. Uh, oh, East Way. <laughs> E40. <laughs> E40 is a rapper out here. So no, that, would be, that would be my rap name if I was in Cali. It would be East Way. Yeah, yeah. East Way. he came up to, you know, I saw him at the game, and Joe Sway was standing behind me doing this video thing. And, and um, I didn't no, know. No, he what interrupted was. you and Gary. That's what happened. But yeah. And I was introducing myself, but I introduced myself. Hey, how you doing? It's a man, E40. I said, nice meeting you. And that's when he used those famous words, ping pong, back at you. <laughs> that's it. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's it. You're looking at me as if I'm supposed to know about this euphemism. I'm like, no, I've never dude, heard this dude, in my life. You, I've never you heard think, in my life. Wait a minute. You think he's on my uh, uh, my iTunes? You think I got him up there or something? Is that what you're feeling? <laughs> yeah, I got e boardy. I don't I don't even think he's dropped that as a bar as like part of his raps, you know, that ping pong line. That's a that's a brand new one for me. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Lastly, uh Max, the the, the Detroit Pistons, man, they uh they, they're still losing. They're still losing. 23 in a row here. And people are thinking that they, they could get close to the, the 30, you know, but before they see the Celtics at least, uh, which would Damn. be around the 27. If they don't if they haven't won a game between now and the first uh, game back at back in Boston at TD Garden, Ooh. it'll it'll be around twenty seven. So what, I just are you, what, are your chances? what are the chances they win? What do you think? It's a, it's it's hard to believe that they're not going to win a game. I mean, I always say that thing of you know a blind squirrel to get an acorn every now and then, you know. <laughs> Or, or, you know, <laughs> this, is the, this is the NBA, Max. Right. Damn it. This, this is a you, got, you got, you got talented they guys. Don't, they don't almost went around the, around the schedule, man. There's the like 22 got, games. You, got, you yeah. got some talented guys over there. And for them, not just to luckily, you know, but just by chance to win one. I mean, you can be bad as you want to, but that many in a row, and, and then to have a new coach and Monty Williams, that, that's, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> I hope I get oh, maybe I get a chance to, to get your guy uh Rick Mahorn on. See where Rick oh, Mahorn that would be a fun to. interview. I would love to he's have him. My, he is my he's my counterpart right now for uh the Pistons. So I would love to see, you know, I'm gonna reach out to him and see what he has to say. Maybe we can get him on the podcast. That would be cool. That'd be cool. Right now it's as this uh episode's being recorded. Uh, they're they're down by they're down by double figures, and but they still got three games until the Celtics matchup, and those three games are against the the Utah Jazz, the Brooklyn Nets, and uh, actually it's a back to back against the Nets. So what do you, what do you think? How about this? Do you want to be the team? Is now how about this? Is that are those two games versus the Nets? Are they on the road or, or are they home? Do you know if they're actually home and home and road? Home and road. They, they swap. Home home and road. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So wow. they're in Brooklyn first, and then they're in Detroit. So that's you, the last. Stay away. You you don't want to be the team that that helps them, you know, stop that streak. You, you don't want to be that team. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think that's I think that's how that's why it's hard to stop now because no one wants to be that team. So Detroit, they really they're really gonna have their hands full every single night now. It, mm. it's, it's it's incredible, incredible stuff. But yeah. All right, anyways, with that we wrap up the Cedric Maxwell podcast. I just wanted I wanted to hear your take on it because we've. We've been catching up a lot, you know, and I haven't, I, I keep forgetting to bring that up to you with the, the, the Pistons. Yeah. The yeah. That's going to do it for this episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. Uh, we'll wrap up the uh, West Coast road trip in our next episode. And uh, who knows when we'll have up next, uh, our next guest here on the Cedric Maxwell Podcast, man. We always keep it 100. He's Cedric Maxwell. I am Joe Sweet Pavone, and uh, we'll check you guys out next episode. Peace out. <laughs>